quite a while in Hebrew medicine. Um, used it uh, a, a lot nowadays for just aluminum healing and um, and uh, for uh, to some degree some uh, some joint issues, cartilage regeneration. It's not really caught on for that a whole lot, but um, but what it is, platelet-rich plasma. It's an autologous product. Okay, you're taking blood from the horse and you're concentrating it. Uh, <coughs> you get uh, a large number of platelets in the end product. A couple different ways you can like do a little centrifuge thing. You can do a little filtration kit. Uh, so you can do the salt side. We have one here. Uh, I think we do a, a little centrifuge that sits in front. So the idea is that you get this concentrated bunch of platelets without all the other stuff that was in there. And platelets are natural reservoirs of growth factors. So they are big bags of growth factors that you concentrate and then you inject right into the injury. And it releases these little growth factors and just helps um, you know, stimulate the healing of that injury. Um, we've been really quite successful with PRP, and it's a little bit less expensive than the stem cells. So this is the one that uh, that I tend to use here, and this is the one that's really taken off in a lot of places. Uh, I want to say our kit is something like five hundred dollars or so. So it's not it's not a nothing cost for treatment, but it can really help these stuff. Advantages: easy to use. It's autologous, means I get it from that horse itself. I don't have to get it from an, uh, another sort that might uh, react uh, immunologically. Um, it has all these different growth factors in here, uh, and it also has a little fiber in the scaffold. So it's got the scaffold and it's got the growth factors. It doesn't have a cell source, like a stem cell would. It doesn't have a cell source. So it's using whatever cells are already in there and can both regenerate. We're just trying to promote the growth. Uh, stem cells uh, have been used, again, in, in a few different ways. We use them a lot in, in tendonitis, uh, but they have been used in some of the bone cysts, fracture repairs, things like that. There's several different types. The ones that are most common commercially are either the bone marrow derived or the adipose derived. Uh, some of the others are more common in research, uh, but you know it's, it's trickier to get umbilical cord blood unless you banked it when your horse was a foal. Uh, people are you know, occasionally starting to do that, but that's a that's an expensive and rare thing still. So. Either bone marrow derived or adipose derived, you can get from your own horse, um, you know, at the, around the time of injury. Um, sorry, okay. So, uh, mesenchymal stem cells derived from bone marrow. Uh, here's uh, here's you know an image of, of someone taking them from the sternum. Uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, so this is a, it's called a gem shape. <coughs> um, just do a little walk right in the skin of the sternum. I don't even cut down, I just go right in with the needle. Uh, you know, pressure it into the sternum and then attach a syringe and aspirate and you'll withdraw the, uh, the bone marrow. Um, once you have this bone marrow, it needs to be concentrated. You don't put the pure bone marrow in there because it's got the little bone spicules and it's got uh, other cells besides the stem cells you want. So uh, we've got low number of cells. We do need to go and, and culture them. Uh, basically, this is just a little <coughs> how you would do that. So you can ultrasound it. I don't tend to ultrasound it. I just kind of go by feel. Um, but it's it's not a tremendously difficult uh, task. So once you get your cells, you would send them off to a commercial company. A lot of vet schools will have a little lab now that does this. And uh, they'll take a couple weeks, they'll culture the cells in a little you know, glass dish, uh, and then they'll get a couple million of them, and then they'll send them back to you. Okay, so you do have a two to three week culture period. Uh, so there is a lag period between when the horse comes in and when you get those cells and they're ready for implantation. Once they send you these little uh, cells in the syringes back, you just put a needle on there, do an ultrasound guided injection right into the cortex. I think we just have a few more here, so we'll go ahead and yeah, we'll we'll just go ahead and finish this and then uh, and then we'll take a ten minute break. Uh, so one study looked at a re-injury uh, rate uh, between horses that were treated with bone marrow derived uh, stem cells versus horses that just rested and then went to um, uh, back to the races. And they found that comparing that, uh, the non-treated horses were 56% of them re-injured. The re-injured rate for the bone marrow uh, stem cell treated ones was 18%. So another study looking here uh, looked at uh, re-injury rates between horses uh, Basically, how long after the injury and the implantation, uh, how did that compare to the injury rate? So they found that the longer you waited between the injury and the implantation of the stem cells, 
the more that likely the horses were to re-injure. So breaking that down, uh, if you wait a long time, there's a bunch of scar tissue that's already formed. So when you put your stem cells in, there's only so much the good they can do. But if you get them in earlier, 